Okay, so um, General Sanders, British Army, feels that we need a mental shift in regards to uh, mobilising the country, Great Britain, for potential war against Russia. My suggestion is that uh, so General Sanders should do what the other Sanders did in the military and just start, you know, doing fried chicken. Yeah, fried chicken and chips. Yeah, because what you're saying to me is absolute nonsense. Russia is not the enemy. China is not the enemy. China is not known for its expansionist foreign policy. Apart from perhaps the Korean War, okay, I can't think of any particular uh, conflicts. Um, possibly the Vietnam War may be very indirectly. I can't think of any conflicts China's been involved in uh, outside of its borders, particularly its interests. Russia, Russia lost 22 million people in the Second World War, 22 million. In comparison, Britain lost 400,000 people. Massive. Percentage-wise, the population okay, put it on another level. Russia is not our enemy at all. And you know something? Yeah, in all honesty, so what if Russia took over us? What's the big deal? How would that really affect your life? How would it really affect your life if Russia was calling the shots right now? I don't think I don't see it's going to affect it that much at all. Many years ago, during the height of the Cold War, uh, I joined up, I served in the army, and in those days, it was always thought that the Russians were just going to, funnily enough, similar today, they're going to run down the border over the Elbe and you know take over the whole of Europe. And when I was based in Germany, I used to have even like what they call it active edge, where within 24 hours you had to be ready for war all the time, totally on a war type footing. Then we had an intelligence brief. I remember it early on where the intelligence people said that they don't actually think that Russia would uh, do an invasion of Europe because they couldn't rely on the Warsaw Pact. They had too many internal problems with the Warsaw Pact countries. I was told that. In the early 80s, I was devastated because when I joined up, I, I was actually hoping there was going to be a war. So I just joined up in the army and I was a bit gutted. Um, but that's another story, okay? The fact of the matter is, Russia is not our enemy. Our enemy, I, I look at it from three prongs, it's like three prongs of our enemy uh, to this country. Uh, the first is corporatism. Yeah, the, the large companies uh, who sort of attack the individuals, as we've seen with the uh, post office masters, yeah, uh, they invade our privacy with all our data, when we keep providing data, whether it's on our Fitbit, you know, Fitbit watch or our sort of, I don't know, mobile phones, yeah, constantly hacking into our data, sharing it amongst themselves. The government have brought out some legislation, GDPR. Yeah, we're supposedly not supposed to uh, be sharing data or receiving cold calls. But hey, they didn't tell you that they also uh, enabled the legislation that banks can share uh, information on other individuals. Government at the moment tapping it, looking to tap in to individuals' uh, bank accounts. If you're on pension or if you're on um, uh, welfare, for example. And then you've got the de-banking going on. Yeah, uh, yeah. Our enemy are the corporatists. They're the ones. They never get put in jail either. You know, that lady, Vanel, whatever her name is, the most she's going to be up, she might lose her, she's lost her knighthood. She didn't lose it. She handed it over. She never got a parking fine. She didn't even get a parking fine, let alone a date in prison. Yet people have committed suicide for the things that she's done. And it's, it happens and repeats itself over and over and over. Okay, um, you know, the, 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 you know, with their profits, you know, with the profit, with the, the, the corporatist profits, they're sent overseas, so they don't pay the adequate, adequate amount of tax. Yeah, you look at the you know, things like Carillion, 
a big, big uh, uh, company. Yeah, look what happened to them with the false accounting. Yeah, these are the dangers in our society. And then we've got the woke brigade, which um, I don't know, it could be some sort of Japanese asymmetric attack and assault on us as, as a nation uh, with their uh, sort of gender issues or politically correct issues, trying to control the way we speak, the way we think, uh, attacking uh, British values every every turn, okay? Uh, attacking British values, uh, you know, trying to make it, they've alienated, you know, uh, you know they alienated the uh, white working class people. You, they, they don't even get, a, you don't see them on television. You don't hear them on the radio. Yeah, they're totally demonized. Uh, and, and they are the bulk. <laughs> yeah. White working class people are the bulk of the manpower uh, here in, in, in the UK. These are the very people who they would be expected to go and be fighting for this country, which they alienate, yeah? And here's the here's the rub. This general who talks about the idea that we might need to mobilize, because I think when I, when I was in the army, we had 50,000, quite hard to imagine now, but we had 50,000 military personnel stationed in Germany. 50,000. That was over half. Or, no, it was about half. It was just under half of our military back in those days, in the 80s. Yeah? Um, based in Germany. Now, uh, our military personnel is 70,000. And, you know, they, they're having problems recruiting. Why have they got problems recruiting? Because they're corporatists. They have Capita, who's responsible for the so-called recruiting. Uh, you've got this woke uh, uh, inclusionist, more diversity and inclusion, exclusion, whatever it is. Yeah, you say that you've got to go for these different you know, parameters and demographics and leave Tommy Atkins out of the recruitment stuff. Yeah, white working class males are the people who want to join the British Army, generally. And you've got obviously a lot of uh, uh, people from other uh, ethnic minorities. You know, if I say the name Chris Akabusi, yeah, uh, 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 Dame Kelly Holmes, uh, Nigel Benn. Uh, these are famous uh, people who served in the military. In fact, they, you know, they got their breaks from the military uh, in regards to the sporting achievements. Um, so, you know, this woke brigade uh, ignoring Tommy Atkins, trying to go for all different types of people. People just don't have no interest in the country or, or in the military. And they're just wasting time. Cap uh, 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 capita apparently it takes something like 400 days to recruit someone from the time someone's applied to try to get in. When I joined the British Army, I just walked into a recruitment office, sat down, had a conversation, done a couple of tests, or went off for testing, bang, got given an offer. Okay? Recruiting sergeants, they're, they're, they're who you need. That would do it. They won't do it, because there's some corporates We've got their grubby little hands for some minister to do some deal with that minister to try and automate it. Yeah? Our enemy is not Russia. Yeah? So the wokeism brigade. And then, of course, we've got uh, people who have come in to uh, change our culture, if you like, um, surreptitiously, if you like, surreptitiously. And we just turn in the other way. Turning the other way. That's it. That's all I've got to say on, on that on that scale. Don't be fooled about the idea of you know we have got a new enemy on the horizons. We've got to be prepared for Russia. Wouldn't be a bad thing if Russia uh, took over us. So bloody what? I'd rather have Russians ruled in this country than Shia law. Quite frankly, that's it. That's what I've got to say on that matter.